welcome to the Small Business Made Simple podcast, brought to you by socialmediaandmarketing.com.au. Being in business is never easy, but it can be simple, or at least simpler. Join me, your host Jen Donovan, every week where we focus on marketing, social media and working towards simplifying your business. You with me? Let's do this. Hey there, and welcome to episode one of the Small Business Made Simple podcast. I'm really excited that you're joining me here, and I'm just thrilled that this is going to air to coincide with the new year. So happy new year to you all. I'll be showing up here every Thursday with marketing and social media tips and tricks, some ideas, and lots more. Life as a small business owner can be a really lonely road. I know I've been there. In fact, I guess I still am there. So I'm happy to walk with you. So strap yourselves in and let's take this little journey together. I really hope your year has started off fantastically in whatever form it is for you. So whether it's work, family, holidays or whatever, I just hope you're already smashing it. The new year, of course, is a great time to be thinking about what 2019 might hold. Uh, how you can grow your business or how you can solve the problems that you encountered in 2018. There'll be no surprise that the first episode of this podcast will be on just that, new goals and setting some New Year's resolutions. But Before we get into that, each week I want to start off the podcast with a tip or a trick or a marketing tool or idea that I just want to share. So every week I'll be sharing something new and this week I just thought for the first one it'd be really fitting for the start of the year to share a tool that I use all the time and I mean all all the time inside my business. It's called Canva, C-A-N-V-A, www.canva.com, Canva. For those of you who already use it, I can feel you nod. You're nodding your head going, for sure, Jen, I love it too. I use it all the time. For those of you who haven't heard of Canva, it's a, it is a pre, free platform, uh, although it does have a paid platform with it. Um, but to be honest, you really really will probably only ever need the free platform. Um, And this will just be the website that will help you transform all your marketing, all your social media and everything. I absolutely guarantee it. So what is it? Well, I guess Canva is like, it's like a graphic design tool. It's actually been around since 2012, which uh, I didn't actually know about. I've only been using it for the last last couple of years. Um, So it uses a drop and drag format, which makes it a cinch to use, which basically drop and drag means there's lots of pre-made templates uh, that you can use for lots of different purposes, whether it be social media posts or a book cover or um, an A4 lead magnet or whatever it is you might be looking for. I also love that you can actually upload your own photos to it, which is awesome for your branding and stuff like that. So if you've already set your goals for 2019 and you don't use Canva, I really encourage you to put on your list, list need to use, learn to use Canva. You'll thank me for it later. I'm absolutely 100% sure of that. It will seriously change the way you do your graphics in your business. There's lots of inbuilt tutorials in Canva, but I do have one of my own. So if you want me to send you what I have as a tutorial, just drop me an email at jen, J-E-N-N, at jendonovan.com.au and I'll just send it through. Okay, so that's how we're going to start every episode going forward. But for now, we're going to start with 2019 and with some New Year's resolutions. I love, love, love New Year's resolutions, especially the BHAG ones, the big, hairy, audacious goal ones. But if you're thinking, you know what, Jen, I don't make New Year's resolutions, then that is perfectly okay, totally okay. 
But what if I actually told you the definition of a resolution was as simple as the decision to do something differently and bring about a positive change? So I think if you think of it that way, that it's just a decision to do something differently, positively differently, then perhaps you might rethink the fact that you don't make them or you won't make them. If you're in business, then somewhere along the line, you are definitely making decisions to do something differently, to bring about a positive change. Otherwise, I simply don't think you'd still be in business. That I think I know for a fact. One of my favorite sayings, and a bit of a side note, you'll learn as this podcast goes on that I actually um, love inspirational sayings and I love goal setting. I'm a bit of a goal setting freak, but please don't hold that against me. But one of my favorite little inspirational sayings, which is really appropriate for the start of the year, is if you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always got. If you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always got. Uh, It's really hard to know who said it first. If you put it through Google, it comes up with Tony Robbins, I think. But I heard it first from my business mentor about six or seven years ago. And hand on heart, I can tell you it's fundamentally changed my life. It sounds really silly, I know, but it really has. Words can be pretty powerful like that. So if we're going to change we need to know what changes we want. I thought in this podcast I might just go through my top five suggestions on how to get some small impactful changes into your business in 2019, given that it's the start of the year. The first one is make marketing a priority. It's not a coincidence that this is number one. If there was one thing that was drummed into me by uh, my mentor and in my mastermind classes, time and time again, it's exactly this. You've got to make time for marketing. It can't be a back burner activity. And by that, I mean it can't wait until you finish this or you get that off your plate or you have some free time. It's got to be a priority for you or for someone in your business. You've got to schedule time for marketing every day or perhaps at least every week. I certainly know in small business that we all wear heaps of hats and you might be thinking this is another one you need to wear. But if you make it a priority in 2019, I guarantee you the results will astound you. One of my members uh, in my marketing and social media group has embraced marketing in 2018. She's been in business for about 15 years in retail. She's absolutely smashed it. She's been kicking goals forever and a day. But in 2018, she made marketing a priority. She just decided that she would make time for marketing rather than it be a, a back burner activity or a, oh my goodness, it's Mother's Day, what am I going to do type of thing. And I really just love all the texts and phone calls and DMs that I get from her saying, I did this and I got this result or you know her little happy dance emojis and things like that. Seriously, she's smashing it, but she's actually smashed the mindset out of the park. There's a reason why this podcast is called Small Business Made Simple and Not Easy. This owning your own small business, it isn't easy. In fact, it's sometimes it's completely overwhelming. But to be honest, it is simple. You know, there's a difference between easy and simple. It's simple because you need to attract more customers or clients. You need to convert those customers or clients. And then you need to keep them coming back over and over again because you can't grow your business without customers. In fact, I'm pretty sure you'd be out of business altogether if you didn't have any customers. So it's not easy, but the formula is quite simple. So if there's one thing I encourage you to do this year, it's other than making uh, sure you learn Canva, it's uh, making marketing a priority for yourselves. The second little thing I wanted to share with you was learn to manage your cash flow more effectively. Cash flow, I know you know, 
is the lifeblood of any small business. And I think, what's the statistic? Something like 82% of small businesses fail due to poor cash flow management. So we all need to make sure that we are keeping our finger on the pulse when it comes to cash flow. You simply can't do it in your head and making sales obviously doesn't mean you're making money, which is a bit of a trap that small business owners fall into. And business growth sucks up cash. In some of the biggest times you've had, you're probably, it's some of the worst times as far as managing cash flow. You've got to learn to manage the cash flow through all the ebbs and flows of your business. The faster you grow, the more capital you need to create to invest back into your business so you can continue to grow. It's just like a little cycle. So if you're having cash flow problems, sit down and seek out where they are. You know, do you find that you don't have enough cash uh, coming through in winter, uh, you know, to survive, to purchase everything you need for summer or vice versa? Work out where the ebbs and flows are and see if you can find a solution for those. Look, I'm no accountant and I'm no financial advisor, but I am a small business owner and I know how important cash flow is. So if you need help, reach out to someone. You reach out to your accountant or your finance expert. And you know what? If you don't have someone like that, drop me an email. I'll put you in touch with a person that I know can solve the problems for you. Just feel free to send me an email, jen at jendonovan.com.au and just say, hey, Jen, I have some cash flow questions I'd like to ask you. Like I said, I'm no accountant and I'm no financial advisor, but I can certainly pass you on to someone who can help you. Don't let cash flow be a problem in 2019. The third little one that I wanted to share with you was um, learn how to delegate and then do it more often. Did you just squirm? (laughs) Does the thought of delegating make your inner core shake? Mm. If you're a doer and a business owner, that's a recipe for disaster when it comes to that dirty word, delegation. I know, I'm one of them. Even with my kids and family, as well as my business, I'm more likely to say, give it here, I'll do it faster, better, or perhaps even I'll do it right the first time. But at least I was reformed. Well, maybe a little bit, maybe slightly reformed. But here's the thing, you know, it's a skill you can learn and it's worth its weight in gold. If you're not a delegator, start with something small and delegate that. If you're a solopreneur, so you just work for yourself and you have no one to delegate to, but things are still overwhelming you, look at VAs, virtual assistants, or get someone to do some of your social media posts or hire a uni student to do some data entry. Give yourself permission not to do everything. If you're not sure what to delegate, then perhaps this question might help. What are the three things you're best at in your business? And if you didn't do them, money would stop coming in the door. What are the activities that you do as a business owner that drives your business. Whatever they are, do them and start to look at delegating or and outsourcing the other stuff. After all, you are your business's greatest asset. So do what you do best and outsource the rest. The fourth little tip I wanted to give you as we head into the new year and, uh, you know, we're starting to think about what 29 team can bring for us is to increase your digital presence. Start thinking about your digital platforms as a marketing platform, not a selling platform. You'll hear me say this all the time. In fact, until the cows come home, social media is not a selling platform. It's a marketing platform. Your online presence is all about winning that digital interview. So if you're not convinced online marketing is for you, then perhaps here's a little bit of tough love that someone gave me. And what they said was the only good thing coming from you not using your digital platforms well is the profits to your competitors. Ooh, 
<laughs> That's got to hurt, doesn't it? Because no small business owner wants to give more money to their competition. They want the money themselves. So think about how you can increase your online presence and how you can start providing value to your customers or your clients online. Rather than using it as a selling platform, start marketing to these people. We, of course, will be dealing this in, with this in a later podcast episode. The fifth and final one that I wanted to go through with you today, heading into the new year, was to take a look at your pricing strategy. Honestly, when was the last time you had a look at your prices or even put your prices up? Or in retail, change the formula you use to come up with a recommended retail price. I know we always had a formula that we used, um, you know, and we didn't change it for years and years and years. So, you know, have you looked at your prices? Have you put them up recently? You know, this time of the year is a good time of the year to be putting some prices up. Perhaps it is time to raise your rates if you're on an hourly rate or prices or, you know, your package prices. You know, do you have good, better, best packages? Do they need to be looked at? Does the value you bring to the table equal what you're charging for that? You might think that putting up your prices will actually alienate some of your customers or perhaps potential customers. And that definitely could be the case, but then perhaps they're simply not your customers in the first place. Maybe they aren't your target market. The story of, you know, they won't pay that for it is a story I hear all the time and all too often when chatting with small business owners. And I've certainly experienced that myself. But when I've tried, they have actually paid that. They absolutely did. In my retail business, they've paid that much for a fry pan. In my speaking business, they've paid to come along to events that were once free. We humans, we are very funny people and awfully hard to put all into one basket, so to speak, all your eggs in one basket. So you will lose some, but you're probably going to lose those customers anyway because they were clearly price driven. And we don't want to play the game of price. You know, price driven competitiveness is just a race to the bottom. And if they don't value you or what you offer, then perhaps you're better off without them as customers. I truly hope that as the new year starts, you'll take the opportunity to look back at what 2018 brought you, what worked, what didn't work, what goals you achieved and which ones were missed and why did you not reach those goals and then start setting some goals for 2019. You know, if 2018 didn't exceed your expectations, then you don't want to repeat that for 2019 or Perhaps 2018 was a smashing year and you just want to rinse and repeat. Do you know why it was a smashing year? Do you know what you have to repeat? So just before we wind up episode number one, just a bit of a recap of the suggested five things that you can do that are perhaps small but very impactful in your business in 2019. The first of all was, of course, making marketing your priority. The second was to learn your sorry, learn to manage your cash flow more effectively. And the third was learn how to delegate. And when you learn, do it more often. The fourth, of course, was to increase your digital presence and making sure you're using digital media as a marketing platform, not a selling platform. And the fifth was to take a look at your pricing strategy. So guys, I hope you found that useful. I hope you found that a little bit helpful. And I really hope that I'll see you back here next Thursday for another episode. If you're liking this podcast already, even though we've only had one episode, I'd really love you to head over to wherever you listen to it, whether it be iTunes or Podcast One or wherever you're listening to it and leave me a rating because those things are actually gold for little podcasters like me. So see you next week. And remember, small business owners, there's no point in dreaming small. Take care. Say it loud, there's no time like the present Tell it like you feel it, say it proud Be true and let us see you for the star that you are